So for the jack, I'm putting on a standard crank jack from eTrailer.com. This is the Ram brand, and it's a 5,000 support capacity and a 3,000 lift capacity. So that's a little bit of overkill for this trailer since it's just a 3,500-pound axle. But um, nice, sturdy, solid. Um, wanted to go with something that I could rely on. I've also got a little uh, somewhere. <laughs> got the foot that we'll put on the bottom here. So obviously that'll help in this West Virginia mud. What if I don't have a board or something to put under it? It won't just put the cylinder down in the dirt. Um, some of you asked, why did I go with e-trailer? Uh, obviously, you know, they've obviously sent me some product, but why would I consider e-trailer? Um, why have I used e-trailer in the past instead of just taking care of this stuff locally like a tractor supply and things? Well, the biggest thing that drew me to e-trailer first and foremost was just the selection they had. You know, here's one crank jack. Man, there were, there were 20, 30, 40, 50 probably to choose from. Different styles, different weights, different classes, all kinds of neat stuff there. Um, Depending on your order size, most of the stuff you get is free shipping. Uh, the guys that they have there are very knowledgeable. They, I mean, they do a lot of their own builds. Uh, if you go to their website, you can see the videos that they do. They shoot all those videos of how they actually use these products. So they're not just a bunch of computer jockeys behind a screen. They, these guys are actually out building these trailers and, and doing all kinds of stuff like that. So really, over this time, got to know them pretty well. Really like their attitude, like their customer service, just like how they approach everything. So that's why, um, obviously, I would go with e-trailer. I've used that on some trailers in the past before we had this uh, uh, channel deal. So uh, definitely something I can speak from experience as to how they uh, handle good customer service and have great product. Well, I'm going to uh, run a couple more bolts in, get this guy down, get the foot on, and uh, move on to our next thing. At least I think I am. Well, that is much easier on the back. <laughs> That's a lot easier than trying to lift this turkey up. So, like that, really nice and sturdy. Yeah, I've, I've learned from past experiences, and, and this one has a grease fitting on it, is don't be afraid of the grease. Uh, the more grease you can put in this, keep it greased, the longer these things will last. Uh, when they dry out, you can be cranking on it, and bang, they snap right off. Or you get it in a funny position, and it ends up breaking or jamming up. Uh, definitely want to keep the grease in it. <clears throat> Well, the next thing we want to do is get it street legal, I guess. Um, although in West Virginia, not too many people do that. <clears throat> uh, got some really nice LED waterproof taillights here. Lifetime warranty on those guys. And uh, set that down so I don't drop them and break them and just test my warranty immediately. And then they also sent me some nice LED amber markers. So let's go ahead and you know, pimp this up a little bit. Make her, make her sexy on all directions. So we're going to put in, I think I've got uh, four of those guys. So we'll add some marker lights to it as well. So while trying to fumble with the camera and hold one of these lights at the same time, I just dropped the right one on the concrete right on the edge of a tool and cracked the top out of it. Brilliant. So we are going to contact eTrailer and their incredible customer service. <laughs> and we're going to order a replacement because somebody is stupid. The um, license plate bracket. This uh, the tail light kit comes with a license plate bracket so you can proudly display your taxation uh, on your trailer. I, um, I'm not going to put that on there. The reason why is in West Virginia, if this trailer was anywhere in a parking lot like Walmart or whatever I run inside, um, sometimes people come by and they just kick those off and take your license plate. So normally I mount a tag to the fender, hard mount it to the fender, or... A lot of times I keep my tag in my truck just because even though that's not the law if I get pulled over I can show my tag 
um, to keep uh, it from getting stolen. That's not a suggestion. That's just uh, what happens sometimes. Okay, so the next piece we're going to add is this locking toolbox and really like this uh, super heavy duty uh, obviously black nice detail there a little hydraulic or a little pneumatic uh, shock there so for the lid to open up nice latch locking comes with two keys here on the inside I think I've noticed I'm, I may have to uh, change my jack orientation around a little bit it's I'm catching there so I may have to swap my jack handle around. I, I can either spin it or I, I don't know if I can put the handle on the other side. The handle on the other side would be fine. So we'll see. Left-handed person living in a right-handed world, right? But uh, I'm going to get this mounted and uh, be good to go. Okay, so a little redneck engineering there modified the jack handle to be on this side so it doesn't interfere with my toolbox. Now you may be wondering, well, Troy, why didn't you just undo the jack, turn it uh, the orientation you wanted? Well, uh, the way this lines up, it, it, it lined up exactly the way I wanted it to. If I had turned it, I would have had to have drilled out some holes or, or reamed out. I'd have had to done a different mounting system, reaming this out or even welded it because it just, it just didn't match up any other way other than this orientation. And I, I just, I like this. I like the jack handle parallel to this, uh, to this side of the frame. And again, it totally misses the uh, toolbox now. When it was on this side, it was hitting the face. So I think, uh, I think that's a better modification. All I had to do was, in the handle, there was just a, uh, a keyway on one side where a, a pin drops through the handle. And since I moved it over, that, that pin wouldn't line up. So I just had to drill another hole in the handle for that pin to come in. Uh, in fit so no big deal there all the gearing still the same uh, didn't turn any of that around so again as long as you keep it greased should be good to go well so the benefits of having a toolbox are pretty obvious you know I can store chains in there uh, tie downs ratchet straps blah 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 all kinds of stuff I can put my lunch in there if I wanted to uh, but what I really like about it is it goes well with this other accessory that uh, e-trailer sent me and you guys like to give me crap about safety chains and I love these safety chains in the sense that they're removable. So uh, I welded a couple lengths of chain to the bottom of the trailer to, to be the attach point. So I can just slide my safety chain hook in through there. It's got a nice uh, safety latch, you know, the old spring-loaded uh, latch there. So it's not just a naked hook. And then I've got tons of chain that I can run to my 
to my uh, attachment point in my truck, my side by side, or whatever. But these chains are so long, and uh, yeah, I could obviously shorten them or twist them to get them the length that I want. Uh, but instead of just having them always on the trailer that they drag through the mud when I'm not using them, you wonder, well, why wouldn't you always use safety chains? Well, I don't use them that much around here on the farm. And you say, too, well, Troy, didn't you just put a trailer over the hill? Yes, I did, because I didn't have safety chains hooked up. It's a give-and-take situation. But these guys, they can be easily removed and obviously placed inside my toolbox, so when I need them. So that's a nice deal there. Really like, like the idea of having those uh, removable, be able to store right in the toolbox, so when I need them, they're always there. When I don't need them, I'm not running them through the mud. Well, so before I replace my uh, tires and wheels with my new tires and wheels that eTrailer.com sent me, um, many of you guys had mentioned, hey, you may want to check your bearings, maybe repack them, do all that. And uh, so I got to looking at it, thinking about how old this trailer is, how much it's been through. And I thought, you know, I'm not only going to do that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace the hubs. Go ahead and put some heavier duty galvanized hubs on it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull all that and, and put these new hubs on. So that's what I like, again, like about eTrailer. My goodness, they just have an endless supply of stuff when it comes to hub options. I had galvanized, I had regular, I had easy lube, pre-assembled with the bearings. Um, you have five on uh, four and a half, five on five, six, four, everything. Just a, a wide variety of options there. So um, I went ahead and went, you know, obviously I'm not going to have this thing in water. It's not like it's a boat trailer. But I thought the galvanized would just be... Uh, just be longer lasting. Uh, yeah, the, this one's rusted up pretty good, so maybe just get some more life out of these uh, galvanized. So we'll swap those out. So through the magic of video editing, I also got my uh, replacement tail light. Uh, it's obviously a couple days. That's why it's a little darker in here and the trailer's wet again. Um, been a couple days. Got that ordered, got it in. So uh, it's nice. You don't have to order the whole kit, of course. They're, they're kits. They sell the individual parts. So all I needed was just one passenger light. Um, instead of the entire kit. So we'll swap that out too. All right, well, I think that's got that one. Now, obviously, I'm not showing a step-by-step -step process on how to change out a hub. That's not the purpose of this video. Um, I will link, however, to eTrailer's video. They do a step-by-step. -step. In fact, that's what I'm watching. Right chair to make sure I'm doing it right. So uh, I'll put a link to that so you can check that out. And that actually works for any hub. Uh, any This is a 3500 axle 3500 pound axle so this uh, that video would be applicable for any hub work so i'll, I'll post a link to that below and uh, now i'm going to do the right side
All right, got it all together here. There's new sexy looking black jet wheels on it. And uh, got our toolbox all bolted down. Jack, wiring harness. Kelly's back in the truck up. That's good, Kelly, right there. So we're gonna plug it in and see how she works. Hit the four way scale. Right. We are uptown fancy pants now. Yeah, I really like how that came together. I like those wheels. Alright, so all I need to do is, uh, of course, I'm just going to get some wire loam and dress out my wiring here. And uh, same with the harness, get it, uh, right now I just got electrical tape around it, so I'll get that all dressed out with some loam, get it looking sexy, and we'll be good to go. All right, well, I thought I'd give her one more view here in the daylight or the fog light. <laughs> so um, everything completed, good to go. Just uh, you know, a couple small details as far as pulling up the wiring harness, that type of stuff. But really, really happy with uh, what we've got together here. I think the trailer's going to last a long time with that thick oak on the deck. I uh, got this liner extreme, super thick coating. Um, cheese grater for the knuckles if you drag your hands across it but it's super strong <clears throat> you know, all the accessories that eTrailer.com sent and I really appreciate uh, those guys partnering with us to, to help us do this so I know I shout this out but uh, if you're going to buy trailer parts check them out uh, their supply their source their knowledge all of that is really good stuff uh, I'll link below to all the components that they sent that we have on the trailer here so you can see exactly what we put together well this has been a fun build um, hopefully you'll see the trailer around on the uh, future videos a lot as we use it as we take it to camp as we do other things and hopefully uh, I won't roll this one over the hill like I did the last one so uh, we'll see how that goes all right take care everybody